Normally, in spectre attacks, uh, usually we use the mispredicted path to uh, access memory that we want to leak, but we use this too. But we also um, use it to inject additional uh, branch misspredictions. Um, and doing so uh, exposes some new attack surface that led to uh, this attack called Inception. Um, and uh, yes, so this. Um, targets AMD CPUs and it um, allows an attacker here on the left side here to uh, de-randomize kernel ASLR um, and uh, leak arbitrary memory from, um, from the memory of the system. Um, originally we found this to work on Zen 1 and Zen 2. Um, a bit later we also realized that this actually also works on Zen 3 and Zen 4. Um, so actually all AMD CPUs in the last five years are susceptible to this problem. Um, so in this type of attack, transient control flow hijacks, we have some shared microarchitectural state between the um, attacker domain and the victim domain. And um, the, attack, the attacker's goal is to hijack a branch in the victim domain so that uh, it mispredicts and executes transiently uh, some code that we refer to as a leak gadget. It leaks information. And to do that, the attacker is um, executing a branch in their own execution domain here, uh, which a, uh, maps to the same branch predictor entry as the branch in the victim domain. Um, once they've done that, they can prime some shared resource like the cache here, um, and then trigger the victim. If the victim is the kernel, then we get a syscall. And when the victim branch here is reached, we get this misprediction that transiently executes the leak gadget, which encodes some secret here into the cache that the attacker can later infer. Okay, so uh, well, this is mitigated uh, using two types of mitigations. We have predictor uh, restriction and predictor sanitizations, and this can be done in both software and hardware in various ways. So, for example, with software, we can replace a instruction that we know causes a, tip, um, a certain bad prediction with one that has similar semantics but does not uh, get predicted in the same way. Um, with hardware or modern CPUs, we can restrict entries that, that were learned, uh, predictions that were learned in the attacker domain uh, from being used in the victim domain. If there is only a single branch in the victim domain or that, we can, that we can expect that could become hijacked, uh, the victim can, similar to how the attacker uh, trained this branch, it can untrain uh, a bad, potentially bad prediction that is associated with it. And if nothing else works, there is also the big hammer, uh, a branch prediction barrier that simply can flush uh, previously learned predictions. Uh, unfortunately, Inception uh, is not affected by any of this. So, um, and the reason why is that well, first we move the, the training procedure into the victim domain. Um, after all of this uh, untraining and such. And this turns the victim into a confused deputy that acts in our favor. And now, how are we going to train this victim branch that now has turned into a return? Um, to do that, we are going to use a transient execution to train it. Um, so to give you an idea how this conceptually works, um, imagine that the attacker can control the direction of this conditional branch here. That means that they could make a transient call here to the function bar Doing so adds a return prediction to the leak gadget here, uh, so that at the later point when we return, there's a chance that we actually uh, uses this uh, return prediction. Um, of course, this exact example does not really work. It's a bit more complicated. And moreover, if you look carefully, this is basically just a common Spectre variant one uh, gadget. So we don't have any of these. We don't expect to have something like this in the, in the victim domain. But there is something else we can do. Um, so Branch target mispredictions can be considered either harmful or harmless, and only the harmful ones are actually mitigated by these mitigations. Um, this includes uh, returns, indirect jumps, indirect calls. They have a long misprediction window where we can leak arbitrary information. There are other branch target mispredictions that occur that are considered harmless and they are not mitigated. So the question is maybe they can help us uh, with this goal. Um, so one of these short branch mispredictions that we have um, is uh, uh, phantom jumps. And uh, as the name suggests, a phantom jump is a branch prediction that can occur in the absence of a, actually a real branch. So for example, in an op sled or anywhere. 
This means that we can turn this kind of concept code into something that looks more like realistic like this, where we can just inject a phantom jumper that we will want to somewhere where there is a call um, that, that followed by a leak edit like this. So in summary, we um, can bypass the mitigations by training in the, in the victim domain um, and be trained using short harmless uh, uh, mispredictions. So uh, with this, uh, we're going to look at how we can actually make a real exploit. All right, so let's see how we can actually attack the kernel with this approach. And so um, the branch predictor acts as a lookup table for various branch types, such as jumps or calls. But for returns, we have a dedicated structure. And this acts as a circular stack um, with a top of the stack pointer. And whenever we encounter a call, we push the return target on this stack. And whenever we encounter a return, we pop uh, uh, from it. So um, with that in mind, uh, let's assume that the kernel has a function f, as here, that performs a call, in this case to bar. And this call immediately follows this leak gadget that uh, Johannes just introduced. Um, and furthermore, the, the, the branch predictor state is set such that it contains a prediction to jump to f, and this prediction is consumed by this victim function here on the left, which contains an arbitrary instruction. And so whenever we now execute this victim function, um, this prediction to f will be used, and a phantom jump will be triggered, um, and, and thus will execute this, this call transiently. So we, we tested this, and uh, we found that this actually does push onto the return stack. However, as soon as the phantom jump window is over, um, this uh, top of the stack pointer is restored to its original position. And thus, the next return actually does not trigger speculative execution of the leak gadget. So the question is, how do we still exploit this? And so one idea that we had is to make this call to bar a recursive call instead. So let's see what would happen then. Um, we have a function bar in the kernel that starts with a call to itself, and that call is again followed by a leak gadget. And again, the, the branch predictor state is set, set such that it contains a prediction to jump to bar. So now when we execute this victim function, we trigger a phantom jump to bar, and we will recursively push onto the return stack. And so the result is that it doesn't really matter anymore where the top of the stack pointer is pointing at. Uh, in any case, the next return will give us a long speculation window in which we execute the, the leak gadget. So I'm not sure about you, but I don't really see a use case for a require, um, recursive call like this. Um, so we are not so likely to find this in the kernel, especially not right in front of a leak gadget. So we have to do something else instead, and this will be phantom call. So during our research, we found that AMD CPUs actually push onto this return stack even before they confirm that there's actually a call there. And that means that by inserting predictions, we can actually make any instruction push onto this return stack. So for example, here we have a branch predictor state, it contains a call prediction, and it's consumed by this bar function here, which doesn't even contain a call. But if we execute this bar function, it will actually push the leak gadget onto the return stack. And as soon as it realizes, the decoder, that this is actually not uh, a call, it will just uh, restore this top of the stack pointer to its original position. So now the idea is that we can replace this recursive call, which is impossible to find, with a recursive phantom call instead. So let's look at the final version of Inception. We have in the kernel this function bar that I just showed. Um, and so to make this, uh, this function act like a recursive call, we allocate an address in user space that aliases with bar in the, uh, in the branch predictor, and we execute a call to bar at this address. And this, of course, gives a segmentation fault, but it does prime the branch predictor with a prediction of a call to bar. And because we want to execute bar um, in this phantom jump, we also uh, allocate an address in user space that aliases with victim, and we jump from here to bar, which again primes the branch predictor with a prediction to jump to bar. And now when we trigger execution of the kernel, it will eventually reach this victim function. And that, because of the prediction to jump to bar, we have the phantom jump. And because bar, uh, there's a recursive call prediction for bar, we will rec recursively push onto the return stack. And now the next return will give us uh, speculative execution of this leak agent. And note that we now enabled this attack um, with basically no requirements on the kernel code. There's no recursive call anymore or even uh, a normal call. And so we also tested how many entries of this return stack we can corrupt with this recursive phantom call. 
and we can corrupt up to 22 entries. And that means that um, on Zen 1 and 2, we can corrupt the entire return stack if it's operating in dual threaded mode. And so we evaluated inception on Zen 2 and Zen 4, find that we can reliably data and uh, locate ETC, ETC shadow. So as a summary, to poison the return predictor, we execute a recursive call in transit execution. And instead of finding this recursive call in the kernel, we inject it using our phantom call primitive. So this issue was under embargo for around six months. Our analysis shows that to mitigate inception, one would need to flush the entire branch predictor state upon privilege elevation, but this comes with a very high overhead. Furthermore, Zen 3 and Zen 4 did uh, lack proper hardware support to flush the entire branch predictor state, and so AMD released microcode updates to enable this. Uh, alternatively, uh, AMD has this software mitigation in the Linux kernel um, that basically makes all, um, only executes a return after pushing a dummy value onto the return stack. So, um, Conclusion, we introduced training and transit execution, and we built this end-to-end uh, end end -end exploit inception that leaks arbitrary data on all AMD Zen CPUs in the presence of both hardware and software mitigations. So it has been uh, uh, five years now since the discovery of Spectre, and we're still dealing with this issue. So what we call that for the vendors such as AMD to incentivize the uh, research on their products and uh, to be more transparent about the type of speculation they actually perform. Thank you.